progression. Marlo Feldman, president of the Albert City Threshermans, once said, all of us involved in the Threshermans show share the task of preserving a piece of our past so that those who follow will have a benchmark to judge the progress that rural America has made. Since 1971, the Albert City Threshermans have been putting that task to work and have been very successful. So when we start walking, we'll have you lift up like that that's going to pull the plow down into the ground. The Threshermans have been a place where families can not only come and have a fun weekend with fun activities, but also learn. You can find all sorts of interesting pieces of equipment at the Threshermans show, from steam engines to threshing machines to tractors, you name it. Co-founders of the Albert City Threshermans, Carl Lind and Keith Sunblad, made it their vision to educate the people who wish to visit the Threshermans show on just how things were done. Well, way back in the summer and fall of 1970, a neighbor by the name of Keith Sunblad, um, he and I um, thought, you know, we got some old uh, equipment interests. Um, we had kids, and we decided to uh, try to do something that might educate our kids. So it was really just a, an idea between Keith and I to start with to uh, bring out some old equipment because we, he shared more of the horse equipment. Uh, I shared more uh, interest in the cars, old tractors. This is a 1925 uh, Model T Coupe. Uh, it was the first car that uh, I bought way back in 1951, 14 years old. And so our first thought was let's do something with oats and threshing machine and start up with uh, doing thrashing and see what uh, develops from it, but it was basically to educate our kids. Some of these cars may be in their older years, but don't count them out. They can still kick it. <laughs> One of the first days of the Threshermen's events is known to be very special to those who want to show off their own tractors. There are lots of parades where people can show off their vehicles but the tractor parade is focused on all of the antique tractors that hold so much meaning and tell all sorts of stories. After the parade, much like the car show, the tractors align to be shown off in the tractor show. A type of tractor you will commonly see in these tractor shows are what's known as the Alice Chalmers tractors. You know, there's so many variations of different things, and at these shows you'll see stuff at the at here that you've never seen before, and that's the, that's the unique part about the, these kind of shows. People love to reminisce about the antique tractors because they love to share stories about how they used these tractors decades ago. It's just that it gets people together. A lot of times you'll see grandpa bring a grandson along and say, that's what I grew up on. And that's the neat part too, just the history part of it. There are many spots during the events where people can reminisce. One of those many spots is what's known as the Freedom Hall. The Freedom Hall is a spot where people can see military memorabilia and learn about where it all came from. We have some uh, projectiles that were made here locally during World War II from uh, the Sun Home Superior Manufacturing Company, uh, Sun Home Manufacturing. Uh, we have some uh, information about a life jacket and K-Pox. This is a Willys uh, Jeep M38 1955, which is post-Korean era. Every year at the Freedom Hall, Garland and Sandra Otto honor veterans by wrapping them in what is called the Quilt of Valor. That was my wife's idea. She's a quilter and she does the Quilts of Valor here on Saturday and issues out quilts, two quilts every show. What we're trying to do here is remind everybody to not forget what their fathers and grandfathers and what we paid for what we've got today. We found it. <laughs> when you take your family down to the Threshman Show, you will hear a lot about what is called the threshing machine. A threshing machine is a machine that separates grains from plants, to put in simple terms. They're fairly simple machines, uh, but they do require a belt drive and you just gotta kinda keep track of them. We're also adding stuff that used to be in the 50s and 60s now. That's coming up in for the younger generation, so 
yes, it, it's going to change some, but it's still going to be a good, good show. Along with the threshing machines are the cutting machines and the steam engines. At the Thresherman Show, there are many sections focused on cutting wood and putting the cut wood into piles, and that place is the sawmill. I'd say I like running the sawmill the best because it's a variation of speeds and uh, what you're doing. It isn't a constant pull, it's varies. Before the show even takes place, workers go out in the fields of what is called cutting and binding. John Thumma, who has been involved with the Threshermans for many years, helped out with the cutting and binding. What we do with the straw stack is, I've got an old wheel rake, which is the first job I did driving tractor uh, back in the day. And uh, we use that to pull just enough straw out of the stack to make a windrow. We can go around, I chase two guys around the, two balers around the straw stack until the straw stack's gone. The Threshermans are known to have lots of friendly individuals who are more than happy to answer any kinds of questions for people. The Corliss steam engine area at the Threshermans is a very good example for which people ask questions about. Luckily for them, Keith Moe and Terry Applegate love answering the people's questions about the Corliss engine. I was on the board for a while when we acquired the boiler. Um, the old one had served out its life. We had to get something different. We liked it when we saw it. We brought it back here to Elbert City and got it installed here. I think it's about 2018 or 2019. We do throttle it up from time to time when people ask, but or you know are curious about it. But otherwise, we just kind of let it run as a you know more demonstration purpose than anything. The Thresherman Show is a very peaceful place where people can learn and have fun. Each station tells its own unique story, and every event has the chance to show people what certain equipment looks like and how it was used back in the day. The reason a lot of people come here is they find this to be a, a real family-oriented show. I think it makes you appreciate what you have in the present, and it prepares you for the future. And the kids get involved and our kids get involved, our grandkids get involved. Young families come and they're probably grandparents or parents are not very far away. And uh, so they get a chance to, hey, that, I know what that's all about. The Threshermans, a place where people can learn, have fun, and reminisce.